initial thoughts on the first few spring practices. Um, first thing I did after we had uh, practices one and two, and I do this every year, but it's always the most fun from year one to year two as you went back. We pulled up the video for spring practice one and two from last year and compare it to where we are, spring practices one and two for this year. And it's what you expect. You're just light years ahead of last season. You know, you hopefully you've upgraded the roster. The second thing is you have your whole staff coming back knowing the whole program. And then you have roughly 35 additional coaches in 35 veteran players. And I say 35, whatever it is, but it's, it's a large group of your guys coming back that know everything. So now when we're drilling and we're going through everything, our veterans can turn around and talk to the young guys and teach them what we're doing, talk to them why we're doing it. Whereas last year they were just learning themselves. So those will be the advantages that we have. Now what comes with being here for a year is a much higher standard and expectation in practice of our veterans because knowing more means we should be able to execute more and we should be able to execute it faster. And so that'll be the, that'll be the, uh, the emphasis for the spring and, and hopefully the result for the spring. So what are the strengths that Tyler has that you think can give him a chance to earn that role? And what are the areas that you think he's got to continue to, to work on to try to beat out Brady? So I, Tyler, with regards to Tyler, I'd say that um, his advantage is, I mean, he can make any throw on the field. He's also tall. He's long. And, and uh, he's got great vision because of you know his body type and his stature. Um, and he sees the field well. So those are things that he does. And then he's also been through three offensive coordinators already and three different offenses and so learning a new offense is it's old hat for him because he's so used to doing it and he's done a really really good job in a very short amount of time of understanding and learning the terminology and understanding how we run everything and I don't know if there's much uh, thinking going on out there beyond what a veteran quarterback would have to go through so it's nice to have a guy like that. He's out there thinking the way Braden is. And so we've got two right now, along with some of the younger guys who are showing a lot of progress from last year. And I don't know that the mental part of it is a big, a big challenge right now in practice. Tyler, we'll get to ask him this, Tyler. But how do you think in general, having to go through three different position coaches, three different voices, affects a player's performance and development over time? You know, it's, it's positive and negative. You have a, a guy that's going to be in four offenses with four offensive coordinators. If he's playing in the league in a few years, that's going to be his experience because that stuff changes a lot, right? So it'll, it'll help him there. Mm -hmm. It also, you learn a lot of football because okay. people call things differently. They teach things differently. Um, the approach that you're teaching that each quarterback is going to be different based on the offense coordinator and what his style is. So... He's just gaining experience with every coach. Probably the downside is, you know, like having Sam Howell for three years. The progression is a little quicker, it's a little more solid, and you have a maybe a better foundation because you've got a year or two already invested as you're heading into year two or three with the same coordinator, the same offense, and the same team. So he's he's taking and utilizing what his experience has been and, and making that an advantage. And we're trying to rep him as much as we can to get him to a point where he's instinctive like we're doing it with the rest of our players. What's the growth you've seen in Braden since since last year when he had those few starts? You know, with Braden Locke, it was nice having him come in, understanding just the philosophy of the offense because he had been with Coach Leach. Um, we are fairly different from the way they approach things uh, in the run game, in the RPO game, in the passing game, it was a lot of overlap, so it was easy. But even with all that, Braden is a different player right now mentally because he's got this system down. He understands how to answer problems and take care of issues while we're out there, and he can do it at a, you know, at a tempo's pace. And so, the mental part of the game will always be an advantage for for Braden. Going back to Tyler, when you talk about, or when Luke talked about him the other day, he said trying to see him come out of his shell a little bit more. How tough is it for a guy that trying to come in, first time ever transferring, and try to be a leader and kind of while he's learning it himself? Well, Tanner went through it last year, and there's a lot of portal quarterbacks right now probably trying to overcome that same challenge. It's hard like, when you're an alpha guy and you want to run the show, it's tough to do it when you don't know. That's why I always say knowledge is power all the time. Like you have to know your job and be able to execute your job before you can go coach or say something to another player. 
And so that learning curve really is uh, kind of correlates with how vocal a guy is, right? When you come in initially, you don't know anything, you're learning. He's not overly concerned about everything else that's going on yet because he's trying to get his world where it needs to be. But now what you're seeing with Tyler is the same thing that we saw with Tanner last year. As he has more confidence in what we're doing, it's easier for him to move a wide out over or bump a slot up or flip the back or say something to the O-line with regards to getting something fixed because he knows it. And so I think right about now and as you go through the next five or six practices, I'm hoping to see Braden and Tyler and Nick and all of these guys that are out there. Uh, Mabry's in a different boat because he's in that first year and he's learning, but those guys take control of some things and not wait for me or one of the other coaches to handle it. Would you anticipate splitting reps between Braden and Tyler throughout the spring and deciding the fall, or is your hope that somebody starts to establish themselves by the end of spring? Well, that's exactly it. We're going to roll through all these guys. We're going to give every one of them an opportunity. Some will get more than others, but we're going to give them all enough so that we can evaluate them. Right? How, how can Mabry take a brand new offense coming from something totally different in high school and make the transition? So that's what we're trying to figure out with him. Nick, was, we're trying to evaluate how much has he improved from last year to this year. And with Braden and Tyler, we're trying to allow them to go and compete right now. But I, to me, this is a four-man competition. I mean, you have no idea who's going to come in and, and be the best guy. I also don't know, other than one time, other than one year, at North Carolina, I can't remember uh, another in recent history where I've had to actually make a decision with the head coach about who the starting quarterback is. That should take care of itself. It should happen on its own. And I think by the time the spring ball is over or the, by the time we're midway through August camp, anybody that knows anything that's here is going to know who that guy is because he's declared it himself with his execution. Last year, it felt like there were a lot of reps, you know, attributed to the number one and the number two spot. Was that something you guys kind of wanted to change, try and get more reps for the three and the four, or split them a little more evenly uh, during the spring? So the spring is the same every year. One and two, three and four are all getting equal reps if they're all on an equal playing field. Um, if there's any kind of separation, then you're giving more reps to the veterans and fewer to the young guys. But it's not a huge disparity because we want to be able to evaluate all four. When we go into August, there'll be reps for one, there'll be reps for two, and three is going to be the third string quarterback by preparation. Four is going to help us, you know, with regards to the exchange team getting our defense ready. And that's, that's pretty standard, and that's the way it'll be just about every year, I think. Is there anything you've learned about Tyler that you couldn't see from tape before he got here? Oh, that's a good question. I, mean, we, I coached against him for two years. He tore us up for two years. At, at North Carolina, I would always evaluate the opposing quarterback all the time. Um, I was asked to do that. So I, I evaluated that quarterback and wrote up my notes on those guys. And so, you know, I had said to a number of coaches there, I think there's two guys that we had seen in the league there that I would definitely have recruited and have wanted, would wanted to coach. And Tyler was one of them. So when he became available, obviously I was excited about the opportunity to get him here. And so, yeah, we're thrilled to have him. And I think it adds more talent and more depth to the room. And that way now the guy that wins the starting job is going to be pretty good because he's beating out some really good competition. And hopefully that's the way it is at every position right now. So last year when you guys came in, you remade the wide receiver room because you needed more bodies. The running back room this year, you've got some guys back, but you also are adding, I think it's three new faces, if I'm correct. You've got a transfer and a couple freshmen. So that's we right. have we have more than that. We have Gideon yeah. Atuka is yeah. here. That's right. Dylan Jones, um, Darian Dupree, those last two will be here and, in June. Yeah, and then also Tyler Walker. What, what will the, it appears you should have more bodies this year at running back. What do you like about that competition? And what do you think you'll be able to do maybe with more bodies that maybe you didn't have that option last year? Well, I think any time you have more talent in the room, not just bodies, mm -hmm. you know, it breeds competition. And so if you want reps and you want to get on the field on game day, you've got to beat out a number of other good players. You know, it's a Yak did a great job at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Aker carried the load for us for a long time. Um, you have three young freshmen coming in who all have talent in their own right. Tawi is a seasoned veteran, so it gives us an older, experienced guy in the room. And then you have Chez coming back, who is dying to get on the field because he didn't get a lot of activity. So that's a talented room. It's a heavy room. There's going to be a lot of competition. 
it also gives us an opportunity to use more of those guys and keep people fresh as opposed to having to play one and maybe two every game. You know, you mentioned Tyler and having to go through so many different coordinators. The linemen here kind of had the similar thing with position coaches. Just how do you feel they're kind of adapting this spring to the new coach, and how do you think it's kind of affected their learning curve, just all the change they've gone through? You know, with the O-line, I think there can be some technique changes. There can be some terminology changes. But at the end of the day, in the run side of the game, power is power, counter is counter. Zone is zone. I mean, what everybody's running the same stuff. They may be presenting it in different pictures, but this is what everyone's defending across the country, and we're, we're no different than they are. I think that uh, A.J.'s personality is extremely upbeat, positive. Um, he's got a lot of energy. Um, I've known A.J. for a while, um, so it's not like it's two brand-new people who never knew each other working together. The transition has been smooth, not just with A.J., but also with – Kenny Guyton, our receivers coach, and I think right now, staff-wise and and uh, personnel-wise on offense, we're in a really, really good place. So you mentioned Nick and the development he needs to have right now. Like, do you think he's made some of those strides in terms of understanding the offense and the, the knowledge preparation side that you wanted to see from last year? Yeah, Nick definitely is a different product right now than he was last year. You know, and you would hope that would be, you know, the the you'd see the progress over the course of a year. And we are. And so he's doing some things better. He's making some better decisions. Obviously, he's athletic, so he's been making some plays with his legs as well. And so that's what we want. We've got to keep grinding now with him to make more progress and get him to you know, where we would want him to be. Last year when you, obviously, you've been a seasoned offensive coordinator. When you look back at last year, especially with the injuries and things, is there something maybe you took away that you felt you could improve on for this season? Or what were different things that you felt maybe as a coordinator could be improved for this year? You know, it's, it's interesting when you're coaching and you're grinding players, meaning challenging them to get better all the time. There was a time in my career, earlier on in my career, where I did that, and I tried to do that to the best of my ability. But I probably went through the first seven, eight years of my career without ever evaluating myself, right? And, uh, and my, my uh, you would think when you're young and you don't know much that that would be your greatest time of improvement, you know, because you know you're coming from nothing and you're just progressing every year to try to develop yourself as a as a coach that can do the job. But I think because I didn't evaluate my my own performance, the improvement wasn't what it needed to be early on. You know, and so the two things that have happened over the course of my career that have just helped me personally, one, I started evaluating myself. You look in the mirror and you ask yourself how are these play calls? How, how is my approach to teaching? You know, the skill set that I'm teaching, is that the best thing I can do? Have I even evaluated any of that stuff and improved it over the last seven, eight years? And in the beginning of my career, the answer would be no. You know, I, I got out of college. I ran an offense. I found something I thought I liked. You think that's the answer? You think you have all the answers when you really don't know anything? And, and you live on that because that's what you're confident with. But when I started evaluating myself, I want to be more critical of me than anybody else. And so that is where I really started to improve as a coach. And I think the other thing was I stopped probably spending all of my time traveling to see offensive coaches. That's how I met Mike. That's how I met Cliff. That's how I've uh, probably uh, adopted the philosophy I have on offense. But the year that I decided to start visiting defensive coaches is the year that I really maybe probably made the most progress. Because yeah, now all I do is seek out any defensive coordinator that will be honest about uh, the game. You know, because sometimes you got to compete against each other, so you're not always willing to share. That's really how I got to know Coach Fickle. I mean, he's always extremely honest. Luke has always been honest about everything. We shared ideas. You know, he was open about telling me positives and negatives of things that we do and that they did. And uh, that's really how I started my relationship with him. And that's how I have a relationship with a lot of defense coordinators. And I think now we're trying to challenge our players to understand the defense the way we do so that they can execute what we're teaching on offense. Do you remember what year that was in your career that you started visiting with defensive coordinators? Uh, Just in the ballpark figure? Yeah, probably like um, 04, 05, 06, something like that. I started spending more time with defensive players, or defensive coaches, you know, who are, who are going to be open about stuff.
and that way we're able to say, you know, you think, hey, we have this play, we write this play up and we draw it on the board, and that's going to be really, really hard for the defense to defend, and you feel great about it. And then you talk to a defensive coach, and he's like, Phil, that's really not very difficult. Like, now, if you all did this, that's hard for us. It's a rule breaker. It's a problem. And that's where you start getting honest feedback from a defensive coach, and it helps make you better on your side of the football. And so that that's just has been so, so probably somewhere around the – Oh four, oh five, oh six years. Did you ever get honest feedback from a coach, and then you kicked his butt later, and he regretted giving you honest feedback? Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I know of, but I, you know, <laughs> hopefully that exists. That means we won the game. <laughs> Let's say with with Braden, just with the news of Tyler, you know, coming to Wisconsin. Have you seen a new gear, or have you seen anything where he's increased certain things uh, at all? A little bit. I think part of that is just confidence and having a year under your belt, confidence and knowing the offense, and he's a competitor, so. I mean, I think uh, you pretty much know your room at whatever position you're going to be in is going to try to be upgraded every year. You're going to try to upgrade that room every single year, so you're going to have to compete. And and when you earn a job, you're earning it for this season. You got to re-earn it next year, at least in our room, you do. Yeah. And you know that's that's going to be the way it always is. So they've got to evaluate themselves, just like we were talking about. I had to, and they've got to get better. They got to keep staying ahead of the curve in order to maintain the position they've earned. Guys, let's take one more. We have it. Um, when, you, when you look at the, the tight end group, a lot of guys have been getting reps with the ones, twos, and threes. Like, do you just kind of see that as an open competition, or do you think anybody's really solidified in any type of spot yet? I mean, this is going to sound like coach speak to you, but it's an open competition in every room right now. Sure. You know, we had Tucker and Riley are back. They have the most reps from last season. Mm -hmm. But if JTC Graves elevates himself and, and moves ahead from a production and execution standpoint, then we'll play JTC Graves. Or anybody else that's here, but Gohan is learning and running around and doing some nice things. So it's just nice to have guys that want to compete their tails off and to have greater numbers in each room so that, you know, as Fix says all the time, iron sharpens iron. And that really is probably the, you know, the, the thing that's occurring in a lot of our rooms right now. So you'd like to have more guys at each position that actually get on the field and help us compete this year.